But what a move by Magnus Carlsen! Oh my god, what a move, what a game between two world champions. It was a pure delight. D4, Knight F6, the opening moves of this classic encounter between five-time world champions, respectively, Magnus Carlsen with white and Vichy Anand with black. We're rewinding to 2019. It's a blitz game in the Tata Steel tournament. Sagar Shah commentating, what a delight of a game and what a move to finish. Let's check it out. Knight F3 from Magnus, D5, Bishop F4, where's the London players at? We've got one for you here. So E6 now played, E3, Bishop D6, and Magnus goes Knight B to D2, turns into a complete patzer, allows Vichy to double his pawns. What's he playing at? Well, he's got a cunning plan. So Queen D6 attacking the pawn. Magnus defends. He's like, I see you, Vichy. Arbiter asks Magnus to not talk during the game. B6 supports C5 and prepares Bishop A6 to trade one of the deadly attacking pieces for white. So C3 now played. We get castles and now Magnus has a think. He does eventually go Bishop D3 but he's contemplating. Does he go A3, A4, H4? Some other move because after Bishop D3, Bishop A6, now he takes and he took two goes to do that or two tempos, you know, as we say in chess. So that's what he was was contemplating. He's now down a minute on the clock. They had five minutes each plus some increment, which is time back per move. So Queen E2 hits the knight. Vichy notices he's a five-time world champion. Why is he underdeveloped it? Well, he's bringing it back to the action part of the board. It takes time, but it's worth it. Knight E5. We see the point of Magnus setting up this structure. He wants the bind, but after C5, knight D to F3, knight E4, Vichy with an output post of his own castles we get f6 and although the knight was on that great outpost square it's not an outpost because you can kick the piece back now knight c4 is a cute move if pawn captures this one drops but magnus goes this way still headed for e3 but not picking up that tempo on the black queen knight c6 developing and you can play a rook to the center here fairly level position but magnus goes for something more double-edged Edged. Interesting with takes on c5. Not interesting in a kind of Kramnik is he cheating way, just an interesting game. So pawn recaptures. Vichy, look how he set up his animals here. Two by two, they're marching in, no floods for him. Lovely pawn structure. And these squares in the center, very well controlled now. An iron grip. But after rook a d1, Vichy, uh, Vichy, Vichy changes the structure in a negative way. There is a threat to take the knight because after pawn takes, the queen drops. But queen e7, a perfectly fine move and a good move. But instead, f5 played, reacting to that threat. Suddenly this knight springs back into life. I really don't like that move, even though the computer says it's okay-ish. But okay, Vichy's got some other plans in mind. Sure, you've got the outpost, Magnus, but I've still got a central clump of pawns and pressure on B2. So Magnus now goes for a great move. He could play steady, take on C6, land the other knight, but C4, absolutely explosive, as we like to say, when it hits the C4 square. Now, surely you go D4 here. Just feels so natural, right? Create the pass pawn. We see it later but the problem is takes takes knight e5 queen hit moves and knight d3 and knights are excellent blockaders of pass pawns you hold b2 as well f3 coming rook f e1 pressure on the backward z6 pawn so strategically white actually doing well there so coming back vichy holds off he takes here. Of course you take with the knight. Never the pawn because you want this outpost for that minor piece. Rook fd8 played. Rook fe1. F3 on the way. So queen a6 from Vichy. Not the engine's favorite, but we're going to stick with the game here. There's so many swings to come. 
Now F3 from Magnus. The knight retreats back and he goes B3 to defend the pawn. But again, many ideas flooding through his mind. Does he take on D5? He in the end goes for this one, supporting C4. Again, if D4, well, we won't go down the rabbit hole. We're seeing it soon. Rook B to C8, covering the C5 pawn, which could be tender as a fillet steak, cooked rare. So that's why Magnus goes Rook C1. He's targeting this pawn some more. And now there's threats in the air of takes. The queens come off, rook recaptures. Then these rooks quickly double. Pressure, pressure, pressure. So that's why we see d4 now played. Vichy understands that Magnus gets this nice strategic idea, opening up the eyes of these ones, but there were other problems. So he goes for this. Rook d6, covering the backwards pawn. Rook c2, just some steady maneuvering now from both players. Knight d7, covering c5 and the key e5 square. Queen g2, does Magnus want to attack? Well, after queen b6, he just holds his horses. He realizes that Vichy's got some serious counterplay with the a pawn. So rook c to e2, pressuring e6. A5 comes anyway. Rook b2 back. Magnus has just wasted two moves but he remains better. Why is that? Well, it's a closed kind of structure. It's more about pawn structure and long-term advantages. You know, you haven't got kings on opposite flanks where every tempo counts in the attack. Rook b8 now played, queen d2, and we see queen c7, not a4, because for one thing you can capture, for another, b4 is a very strong response. So instead, the queen moves back. They always sit most comfortably when they're not in the eyes of a blasting cannon. Queen d1 now from Magnus, not the most precise. Now a4 is a decent move. If captures, you get some real life with the queen, b4 no longer working. But okay, Vichy goes for something more steady, pawn h6. We get rook b to e2, pressuring e6. Queen b6 now covers, and h4. Things are hotting up. A4, it's getting seriously hot in here. But the players do not take their clothes off. It's generally frowned upon unless you're trying to prove you're not wearing a chess cheating device. Then stripping is mandatory. We've not seen it for a while. Rook B2 here from Magnus, defending the weakness. Vichy exchanges. This is a backwards pawn. It's weak. But... Queen a7, Vichy switches plans here, going for the a file. King h2, rook over now. Vichy like that seagull in Finding Nemo. Mine, mine, mine. He wants that a file, right? Magnus, not to be outdone, goes queen e2. He wants the second rank. He starts jumping up and down, flapping in his seat like a seagull. Both players up and down, really flapping away. Again, the arbiter has to intervene. Very strange behavior for two former world champions. They should know better, but okay, the game proceeds. Seeds. The rooks double, the pawn under fire, but I love this now. Magnus ignores because his threats are greater. He goes g4. Gary the G pawn coming down the board, the debt collector wants to bang in Vichy's door. Now, if you take here, the problem is the liquidation and E6 caves in at the end. Big attack for white. So instead, Vichy takes. He wants to keep the E file closed from an invasion, not let Magnus take. We see this pawn recapture. F becomes G. Gary the second, trying to carry on the work of his brother. Queen c7, pressuring f4, but it's covered by this amazing steed. And now g5 from Magnus. He wants to get at the throat of Vichy. So h captures. Gary the third is born from the h file. Harry becoming Gary. It's on its way down the board, but Vichy's got other plans in mind. He goes for some craziness with pawn e5. The game is exploding into life. Let's not get too hung up on this evaluation bar. It swings all over the place now like a yo-yo or a seesaw. Call it what you want. Magnus takes the th uh, free pawn. Thank you very much. 
Rookie six pressuring. This is Vichy's point. He could have, however, taken here. That was also a great play to crash through on B3. But he goes for this, but great maneuvering by Magnus. He snakes in with the queen. It's like he's got his Nokia 3310 from back in the day. He reaches the promised land of the D5 square. The rook pinned to the king. So knight B6 now played to kick that queen. Why not sidestep with the king? Well, then king g3 these rooks joining the party if king this way rook f2 so that's why knight b6 the queen gobbles the pawn thank you the engine wants to take off go for the end game but no vichy's got other ideas he wants to checkmate magnus carlson so rook g2 covers this weak pawn rook f8 joining the party and magnus now goes wrong you know top moves are like rook e4 some defensive -y stuff but he goes queen b5 preparing knight c5 rook f3 hits that knight it jumps to c5 and now vichy has a winning move but it's very difficult to spot if you want to test your tactical skills do pause have a good look how can you get at this white king think about checks and threats but also loose pieces right so very well done. If you found the move of rook h6 check, what a thunderbolt. Because if you capture, the queen joins the party and this one drop in and it eventually leads to a mate. Just some awesome stuff. Amazing attack. And coming back here, if you don't capture king g1, whoops, king g1, then there's more attacking ideas with pawn d3. It goes on and on, this kind of thing. But black doing well here. Eventually, you're giving the queen, you get something like this. Long lines, right? We don't want to go too down the rabbit hole, but that was a winning move. But missed. Rook g6 instead. Looking for takes on g5. Magnus now has to go knight e4. Four, but he plays e6 huge blunder he's winning Vichy's winning I should say if 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 he plays the main move the most obvious rook takes on g5 but he got spooked maybe he was worried about e7 intercepting communication but you can just check you get something like this you're crashing through it's a mate you know quite surprising that a former world champion missed this one it is complicated but just a dead game for white however vichy inverts the order checks first and astonishingly it's a huge blunder because after king g1 now he takes on uh, g5 here, and this is his point. If you take, which Magnus doesn't do, then you check like this. The rooks come off, queen invades, and this is a perpetual. The game would be a draw. But Magnus doesn't take the rook. He finds the stunning move of knight to e4. Here's Saga Shah going nuts. But what a move by Magnus Carlsen! Oh my god! What a move by Magnus. Vichy has 37 seconds to figure out what to do, but he is left clueless here because there's absolutely no move. He resigns the game and you can see from Magnus Carlsen that was a tough fight. Why is this such a good move? Well, two pieces are forked. Surely though you take with check, but then the rook's under fire. Hang on, can't you just cover with the queen, queen f4, but then check suddenly white's attacking you step to the h file this rook joins and you're actually getting mated the king can't step up you give pieces and you don't even need to take the queen you can mate with knight g5 and coming back here if you don't step up the board if you cover with the queen well then these ones can come off e7 rook e8 knight d6 game over that piece is dropping what an absolutely fantastic game resignation was here from vichy here's the final applause what a game between two world champions it was a pure delight and i hope you enjoyed smash subscribe if you did never miss a video and for another incredible magnus game check out the video on screen thanks a lot for watching and see you soon